Hey guys, today we have another resin for you that is really interesting. Now the subject today is one that you've probably never heard of, and that is Power Resin Yellow. So we reached out to Power Resin while they were on, uh, I think it was a conference for dental or something like that. And you've probably never heard of it because it's not even on their website yet. Uh, they really have no information. And even though I have been in uh, contact with their dev teams, uh, they still didn't really give me a whole lot to go off of. Um, so as of this recording, it's still not listed on the website and we still really don't have a whole lot of information. Basically though, the selling point for this resin is ultra high resolution prints. In other words, the prints are going to be extremely accurate. I can confirm that Power Resin Yellow does indeed produce prints with a very tight tolerance as compared to some of their other resins. Not just Power Resins, but other brands as well. For example, we printed this chain. This is a double Cuban link chain. Uh, you notice that one of them didn't quite stick. We'll get more to that in a bit. Um, but we printed this chain pre-assembled in software. And when I pulled this off the print bed, it came off pre-assembled as you see it now, basically just ready to go. Now each one has its own sprue and I really should have had a bar on the bottom to hold everything in place. I will be redoing that for the testing, I think. And basically what that bar would do is maintain that distance so that when we do the casting, this doesn't just touch and then fill in because if any part of these resins touch together, the metal will burn away, or rather the resin will burn away, metal will fill it, and we won't have a chain anymore, we'll have a bar. I also tried printing this smaller to see what kind of tolerances we could get. I would say the tolerance on this one was maybe in the 0.25 millimeter range, and again, it still worked out really well. I tried this same uh, chain design on their opaque, during the testing, because I just happened to have the model already, and the opaque one did not come out nearly as well. Basically, it started to adhere together. There was a little bit of bleeding, and uh, they came out stuck. With yellow, though, it always seems to come out as a chain, as it should. I could see this resin being very useful in areas and other industries where printing has to be accurate. For example, if you were making watches, or something. Trying to print the bracelets in particular where you've got a 0.5 millimeter uh, pin holding all of this together, you need those tolerances to be perfect. Not to mention, uh, you know, having everything fit together. Very, very important. Uh, I believe in watchmaking, the tolerances are like 0.01 mil, um, where in jewelry, you can sometimes get away with, you know, a little bit more. I could also see it being useful in a jewelry context, specifically for pave setting, where you've got tiny little, maybe 0.5 millimeter diamonds that need to sit in each seat and have little prongs very exactly. So how exactly is this achieved? I honestly couldn't tell you. Uh, the most logical assumption for me, uh, in terms of print fidelity, like how would you get a more accurate print, seems to be more on the hardware side. How exactly they managed to make a resin, a fluid, more accurate is some sciencey stuff that's way above whatever my pay grade hypothetically could be. <clears throat> We're gonna do some further testing with this resin in the future using a different machine as well. Uh, make sure you get subscribed for that because you won't wanna miss it. Okay, so our settings for this were pretty simple, I think. Oops. Uh, we had a 90 second base and 10 seconds per layer on the Mars 3 and the Prusa SL1S. Now these are coming to us from Power Resins themselves. So this is what I'm gonna run with. Um, however, make sure you check your printer settings uh, on their website when this resin launches. Um, just another side note, something that uh, I found interesting was actually the failures. So when the resin didn't stick, the, the models that got stuck to the FAP, like a little pancake, um, the edges were not overexposed. Normally what happens is because it's stuck to the FEP and it just continually gets hit by that UV, it tends to creep out, get a little bit thicker and deeper. But with the yellow, it just stayed like a perfect outline, which I found very interesting. 
So in the early stages, I, I found that very telling that um, this resin is going to be accurate. Now, when it does uh, actually succeed, we did see signs of overexposure, and that was mostly in the area of stone settings and little details around the sides. So this resin isn't going to be infallible. You can't just like throw any settings at it and make it work, but it's definitely interesting to say the least. So let's move on to the casting. We'll get all of this sprued up and we'll be right back to show you guys those results. So we're back with the results for Power Resin Yellow, and they are pretty good, as we expected, honestly. Um, Power Resin is, if you've watched any of our previous videos, is a really, really good uh, resin for casting in general, and I wasn't expecting any different. So the overall, uh, we, we cast everything um, that we printed for tests except the chains, and the reason for that, I know it's disappointing, but the reason for it was because I didn't have a bar on the bottom. So I will most likely be revisiting this in a future video when we um, get our hands on a DLP machine, which is gonna be more accurate anyway. Um, and we'll just use up whatever yellow we have left for that. But anyway, the reason why I didn't is because there's a, no bar, which means that all of the spacing was lost and the results would have been kind of irrelevant anyway. Uh, plus it would have been 10 times more work and um, I didn't have a whole lot of room in my flask. So there's all my excuses. Uh, let's get back to the actual casting quality. Um, all of the prongs and stone settings on the saddle ring turned out awesome. I see a very minor bit of uh, like porosity just on the top there, but nothing major. That looks to me kind of like ash and it could have been just related to something else in the kiln or the flask that just fell in, uh, or even during casting. It might have been a little bit of graphite or something. But overall, uh, all the stone settings, all the holes under them turned out great. Moving on to the skull, all the details look phenomenal. I don't see any surface texture on the smooth inside or on the outside where it shouldn't be. And overall, this looks a, like a beautiful, beautiful casting. The pave setting ring turned out a little bit disappointing. Um, all of the little holes for the stones filled in, but I have a feeling this is more related to the orientation of the model in the flask. Um, if you weren't aware of this actually, when you do casting, the placement of your models really does matter. You can put these tiny little ones on top and then do heavier models on the bottom. And if you reverse the order, you will get poor results. My theory is that when the metal is at its hottest, you want it to be hitting all the small details so it has the most chance to fill in all the little prongs and things. The pave ring, aside from the stone settings, which I believe was my fault, uh, turns out great, very smooth sides, no surface texture, except for where I had some support holes, but nothing major. Uh, onto the engagement ring, a uh, little bit of surface texture, but honestly, it's no worse than the um, the layer lines. So it would just disappear with sanding anyway, which uh, you would be doing on a project like this. And then we have the tiny little engagement ring. This one turned out great. Uh, it looks like I bent one of the prongs. That's definitely my fault. Uh, I think that was just during the cutting process. It kind of got a little bit warped, but other than that, it's perfect and then the heavier signet ring. This is the one that we tend to see the issues with, um, especially regarding surface texture. The layer lines are very clearly defined, which is a good thing because what I put into the kiln is what I got back. It's nothing again that I couldn't just sand off. Um, this is where resins tend to fail when it comes to heavier models. They put out surface texture, you get issues, and I'm not seeing any of that on the signet except for this one little spot on the top, but it doesn't look like porosity. It looks like, again, like a piece of graphite or something might've fallen in. 
Anyway, no biggie. Um, all of that is very, very fixable. And I would say any of the problems were related to my setup or casting phenomenon that is outside the control of the resin itself. So stay tuned for Power Resin Yellow because I suspect they'll be launching it in the very near future. And if you wanna get your hands on it, um, make sure you check them out. I believe it, well, I don't know anything, frankly, but I mean, their typical bottle of resin costs around 300 USD per kilogram. Now we do have a discount code, which I will put down in the description. I believe it's for 10 or 15%, I can't recall. And um, make sure you use that code because 300 bucks is pretty expensive. But if you want top quality casting, then you already know where to go. So that's all for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see more of this content, make sure you get subscribed. Uh, we have uh, I've been mentioning that DLP printer and other things. So like we have a lot coming down the pipeline. Make sure you don't miss it. So I'll see you guys in the next video.